Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Emmanuel, and uh, welcome back to another episode of Storytime. I hope that's a good name. Anyhow, today we're going to be learning how I onboard myself into a new code base every time. So, you know, like uh, I've worked in different companies, and in those companies, I had to work with new code base, right? So, how exactly do we do it? Because it can be very much overwhelming. So um, that's what this video is going to be about. If you just got a new job and you are thinking of how to onboard and you're currently stressing out, then hopefully this video is going to help you ease out and just relax just a little bit. All right. So um, I have a few points, just five to be exact. And um, let's get to it. So the first point I have is test the app. So um, I've made this mistake a couple of times. I have seen people make the mistake as well, where uh, they get hired into a new company and they just go straight into cloning the project and then trying to play around with whatever the code base has, right? But I would say, uh, even though if you're good, then this may work for you, but it's always best to have a general idea of the product, okay? So, um, and this is me speaking after you already know, like the business aspect of it, you know, when you're doing onboarding, you're going to do like, um, talking about the company values and all those things, right? We're talking about the code base here. So before you go ahead and clone, the first thing you should do is go over to the app store. Hopefully the company already has an app in the app store and uh, that's why you're onboarding. If not, it's going to be a new project, but they already have. So go over to the app store, download the app and then just play around with it. So just go through the different screens, create an account, log in, reset password, go see the dashboard and just be scrolling and enjoy what you see. Like just go through, look at the animations and be like, hmm, these people are really good. So you can just go ahead and just play around with the app, uh, check the settings page. And this is going to basically give you an idea of um, the theme of just like the feel of the app. So you see the kind of colors they use, you see what the button looks, the buttons look like, you see what uh, their text fields look like, whether they have like hands. You can basically just see a lot of things, their loaders and all those things, all right? And at the same time, even though you're admiring what they have, like the animations and all those things and colors, you are at the same time spotting flaws, right? Just because you know you're coming from a different environment, you're coming with a fresh perspective. So you would probably spot things that you could have done differently. So um, you may see some buttons that are not properly aligned. You may see some bugs, you know, you can just take notes of them. And this is only possible because you are testing the app itself, okay? So this is extremely important. Go ahead, download the app and test it, all right? Now, the second tip that I have is for you to get the app running on your local device, all right? So now you've tested the app on the App Store, everything looks good, okay, I like what the app looks like, so I wanna get into, I wanna get dirty, I wanna write code. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and clone the project. And usually, depending on the scale of the company or the team, cloning the project may not be enough for you to get running. So you may run into some setup issues, maybe you need some for iOS, you need some certificates or some profiles, you need to install certain pods or whatever, but there could be some background tasks involved in setting up your project. So this is a good time for you to, you know, go ahead, clone. If you don't have access to GitHub, you can request and just do all of those setup. But the goal here at this particular stage is to get the app. So when you click on the play button, the app should launch on the simulator, okay? So that's the goal for this stage, to just forget about every other thing. So um, yeah, you just go ahead and do that. And uh, when you're done, the next thing that you wanna do is to go ahead and read the documentations, all right? So um, the reason I said to set up the code base first is just so that you can, because I don't know if it's just me, but if I don't have the app running, I feel an itch, you know? So when I, when I have that done, like I know that I can run the app on the Xcode, I'm a little bit more relaxed, all right? And then I can go ahead and read documentation. So, you know, just lay back, sip some coffee or some juice, and then you're just going through the documentation on your phone or, or your laptop. You can just basically go through, all right? So I feel more relaxed personally when I already have my app set up. But if you want, you can go through the documentation first, okay? But in this video, go through the documentation 
And what you're doing at this stage is you're basically checking the team conventions. How do they create pull requests? Um, what is the branch naming convention? Um, how do they structure commits? Um, what kind of design pattern is being used in the code base? Uh, what's the architecture in general? How does, um, if I were working on a new feature, how would I go from the view to the network request back to the view, all right? So these are questions that you're asking around this stage. You already have the app set up. And uh, if there are no documentations for this and the team member already exists, you can go ahead and ask, all right? So, hey, please, how do you, what exactly is the convention for uh, maybe pull request? And for this kind of case, I probably will not ask because you can easily just go to GitHub and pull request and just see what, the style is right so yeah you don't you may not always have documentation so unfortunately it's a problem that um, everyone has I think or most people have is documentation so if you don't have documentation you can be a little bit more creative in the way you find your answers right like uh, you want to know what the commit convention is you can just go ahead and do git log and then you see the commit history you can basically just say okay so uh, I see that there's a pattern of a max four words and then there's a description, all right? Or my commit uh, message has the uh, ticket, so a Jira ticket, for example, the ticket ID and the scope or whatever, all right? So you can basically find these out yourself or check the documentation or ask, okay? But the idea in this stage is to basically understand the team convention, to understand how you can get from a view, so implementing one view, to raising the pull request and getting it merged everything that is involved all right and again you don't need to be too technical about your thought it's enough for you to understand the broad process so i'll give an example let's say in my team what happens is we have a development branch all right so um i'm basically asking okay or oh, oh, there's a documentation or whatever how do we what's the process what's the feature process for example Okay, so first of all, you have to check out or check into the development branch, pull the development branch, go into a feature branch from the development branch, work on the task, and then raise a pull request, and then merge it to development, okay? This is like the workflow in a high level um, level, all right? So um, that's done, I understand this. Now, how do I work on the task? You say, okay, so, um, we have our designs in this particular page. So if you are working on a new feature, they would give you a, um, a link to the Figment design. They would give you a link to the backend APIs. And then you're going to see a description of the task in maybe Jira, okay? So these are questions I'm asking or and answers I'm getting. So um, now I know that, okay, so in the code, how do we work? How do I, how do I um, you know, go from the view to make a request? Now, this is a question I could ask, or I could go to the code base and then look at it. So uh, if I understand what the design pattern is, it can basically inform my um, thinking process. So if, for example, I know that we're using like MVVM, generally we have a view, we have a view model. So if I know that the team uses the MVVM design pattern, then I know that every time I see a view controller, in our case, or a view controller, then I will see a view model, all right? And from the view model, I know that we're gonna make a network request using our, maybe our network service, and then I get my response back into the view model, then I maybe update a particular attribute or variable, and then my UI refreshes. Now, if I have this general idea of um, like the flow between the view or through the view to the network request and back, then this is basically gonna help me know where to look if I'm trying to maybe understand a specific feature. So if I wanted to maybe understand the login flow, then I say, okay, so login view controller has like the view and the view logic. Um, I know that there's going to have to be a login view model. So I go into the login view model and I see uh, a function to login uh, a user, it takes in the email and the password. Then I see that, oh, okay, so there's a network client over here that they use to make the network request. And this basically tells me that if I were to be implementing a new feature 
and uh, I need to make a request. I want to use the same network client, all right? So this is basically gonna give you an idea of, um, you know, like the steps to take. And uh, you can basically just take a 360, not 360, but like a full cycle of your um, feature process. The next thing or the next stage that I always get to is break stuff. And this is like my fourth, I think. Yeah, the fourth stage break stuff you just like just take things up <laughs> just scatter everywhere but the idea the idea of this stage is don't be afraid just go ahead and change things so i see that they use a button here and they're passing in a strange color what happens if i change the color from this to this how many places is this going to take effect so um you can just go ahead and change that and then run the app and when you run the app you see that this change affects so many screens or it affects just here or it affects this place in this way um okay so uh what if i launch this page in this other way like just do do stuff all right and um while you're breaking stuff make sure you don't commit and push you can commit as long as it's in your local but don't push it to master because that's gonna be terrible but basically you have a file you have a playground do with it as you please all right so um and it's very very helpful i can't stress this enough like if you go ahead and you are just changing things you are basically going to be learning what and why things are the way they are and where they are okay so if you see some extensions and uh you change whatever in the extension you run the app and you see what you changed then uh, you just learn all right and it's also going to be uh, helpful if the team like writes tests. So if they write tests and you change stuff, you can go ahead and run the test and see what happens. Do tests fail? If the tests don't fail when they should, then you take a note. This is an improvement that you can make, okay? So just go ahead and just break stuff. Break it, take a glass cup and break it, all right? And uh, then and the, final, uh, the final tip that I have or the final stage that I get to when I'm onboarding into a new code base is to pick up a task. Now, usually when you're working in a new company, um, reasonable team members would give you some time, you know, to relax. And usually, if you're not careful, this may get to your head. You think that you have enough time and you're like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna go home and just sleep. Uh, okay, tomorrow I'll check it again. You just be more careless. And if you do this, you're going to spend a lot of time wasted. Also, you would also you you also see people you know spend a lot of time just reviewing code like checking documentation so reading 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 going through the code base just checking 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 checking, checking. and the truth is you I don't want to say you cannot but most likely you will not understand in fact you will not understand everything in the code base it's almost impossible for you to understand everything because look this code base has been has undergone like changes for years and you want to understand it in like two weeks dude it's hard so um because of this fact you would see people just go into a loop and then they're just checking so many things and learning so many things and asking so many questions and just always just looking at code and then they get stuck but what i found is that you also learn so after breaking stuff you learn faster if you take up a task as quickly as you can, all right? Now, don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say you should rush into it. Don't just pick up a task in your first day or something. And also, if you can, don't officially pick up the task. So you can just ask, okay, uh, or just check the backlog. What tasks are pending? And just say, okay, this one looks simple. So let me take this and let me try it out on my local, all right? So you've broken stuff. And now you want to see whether you can properly add stuff into the code base without breaking stuff again. All right. So um, if you take up a uh, if you take up a task, then um, you now have an opportunity to basically showcase what you've learned. You have an opportunity to, um, you know, uh, hopefully it's not a big feature, but something small. You implement some uh, tasks, you make some changes, you run your test, everything passes, you run the app on the simulator on your device, everything works, 
and then you're not able to practice your um, team convention of writing commits. Okay, so get add, get commit, and you write it with the team convention. Then you go ahead and raise your pull request, well documented, and everything is just good, right? So this is just a good time for you to practice your knowledge by or just using a very simple task okay and usually if you're working in a good team they will not like bombard you with questions hey is it ready we need this today we they'll be more chill and it's also good for you to start this early so that you know you have more time to play around with this task so this is actually i think my personal favorite um like my personal best stage just pick up a task something simple i remember like in my current place my first task was to add an icon to the code base yeah so like that's how it seems so simple but then uh, well it was simple but there are things that i needed to know to be able to do that all right so like don't don't underestimate any task whatever task it is if they say uh the button corner radius is 10 we want to make it two so you just basically change two characters be proud take it change that two or five to two with pride and then raise your pull request and yeah be happy about that so yeah this is um for me like very important tip you should always pick up tasks as quickly as you can work on it in your local environment if everything works then you can raise a pull request all right and uh, while you're doing all these things it's very important for you to ask questions so it's like you're going to be seeing a lot of, of um, new things, different ways people are implementing code because you know, like many people may have written into the code base for years. So different styles of thinking. So you may get overwhelmed and that's fine, but just take it easy, take it easy and just move one step at a time. Remember to break stuff for some reason, like breaking stuff also makes you feel a little bit lighter. So, yeah, just break stuff. And that's it. So my five stages for onboarding. So um, we can try it in your next job or your current if you just got this job. And let me know if it works for you. If it doesn't and you have more stages or tips, then go ahead. Actually, this is more tips, uh, more stages. And maybe I'll release a video about tips, maybe. But if you have more um, opinions, go ahead and just flood it in the comment section. And um, until the next video, you guys stay safe.